Welcome to tonight's virtual trillion dollar mixer here with Quest Trust Company. I am super excited to have a great presentation queued up for you guys from Robert Martinez from Rockstar Capital. But before we get started, I do just have a couple of quick announcements for you guys and a fun little retro toaster video that our team has put together for you. Juan, if you want to go ahead and queue up that video, I'll go ahead and finish my announcements once we watch this video. My goodness, another downturn for the stock market. How on earth am I going to make money and retire at this rate? There has to be another way to invest my money safely. There is. Who said that? The disembodied voice in your kitchen. Oh my! Wait, what other way is there? It's something called a self-directed IRA. A self-directed IRA? Yes. Well, what does it do then, huh? A self-directed IRA allows you to use your 401k and IRA money to invest in alternative assets such as real estate, notes, and private entities. With self-directed IRAs, you can take control and diversify with alternative investments that you're knowledgeable about without the uncertainty and fluctuation of the stock market. Well, that sounds like a swell idea. How do I get one of those? All you have to do to get started is open up an IRA with Quest Trust Company. You can speak to one of our certified IRA specialists and submit an application in just a few minutes. How grand! I think I'll call them right now. But wait, there's more. There's more? Don't get burned by the stock market. When you open up an account with Quest Trust Company, we'll send you a free toaster. That's right, when you open an account right now at Quest Trust Company, we'll give you a free toaster. All you have to do is use promo code TOASTER and call 1-855-FUN-IRAs or send us an email. All right, perfect, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that video kind of as we let people get signed on here. And that's right, we're doing it. We're giving away free toasters. It was initially just for the month of June, but it has been so popular. We've had so many people requesting these toasters that we went ahead and decided to extend it through this month of July and possibly even longer than that. So if you guys want a free toaster, it's the hot thing to do, giving those away. Um, but give me one second. Let me get my uh, screen shared here and we'll go ahead and get into the rest of the announcements for tonight. So like I was saying, welcome to tonight's virtual trillion dollar mixer here with Quest Trust Company. We host these events uh, a few nights throughout the month where we bring out some of our higher level speakers. Tonight, I am super excited to have Robert Martinez with us from Rockstar Capital. Um, but again, before we get started, I do just want to give a couple of quick announcements for you guys. If it's your first time joining us tonight, first of all, welcome. We're super excited to have you here, not just at our online events, but we're really excited to be bringing back our in-person events coming up next month as well. At the core of our business, Quest Trust Company is a self-directed IRA custodian. So we specialize in helping investors diversify their IRAs to invest into assets outside of the stock market. So our clients use their IRAs to invest into real estate, private placements, multifamily, commercial deals. And a lot of our clients like to use their IRAs to be private lenders as well. So you have a ton of options along the way. Quest does a ton of education to not just educate you guys about the different types of assets that you can hold in an IRA, but how to actually do these deals in the correct way, you know, doing your own due diligence, networking and meeting the right people that you can rely on to kind of have on your power team. But along with this, we do have to give a disclaimer. This is so important. Please be aware that at Quest, we do not give tax, legal or investment advice. We put on a lot of education. We bring out a lot of different guest speakers, but please do your due diligence. Don't invest with someone just because you met them at a Quest networking event here in one of our offices. You know, make sure you take your time to use professionals to structure your deals properly and really make sure that you're building a solid network before you just start investing a bunch of money with people that you do not know. So now that that is out of the way, the rest of my announcements will kind of focus on some of our upcoming events that we have. And I am super excited to announce that, you know, if you guys are a Quest client, we do have a really awesome online client portal. 
you are going to see us push out a lot of education about our client portal over the next upcoming weeks. We've really added a lot of new features to this portal throughout the last about year and a half, I would say. You can actually upload all of your expenses to do with your real estate investments and get those paid in about 24 to 48 hours. You can generate custom statements in your account for certain investments. Maybe you have you know, certain borrowers that are making their payments back to your IRA. You can generate custom statement statements for those investments. And our probably coolest feature that we've added within the last couple of months is actually the QTC Investment Hub. So the old days of filling out a physical direction of investment form are slowly becoming a thing of the past where now you can just upload all of your investment information, all of your documents directly online to the client portal. It's safe, it's encrypted, it's secure. You can keep your personal information out of your email. And if you have not explored these features yet, be sure to log in online and go check out all of the cool features that our client portal has to offer. You know, it really helps to automate these systems for uploading your investments and it helps to keep your information safe and secure as well. Now, tonight's event is just one of many events that we host at Quest. Um, we, over the last year and a half, have done a ton of online education. All of these classes that we host live throughout the week are available to rewatch at any time on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel actually just passed 2,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to go check out our YouTube. Um, Sarah, our moderator tonight, will actually be putting these links in the chat for you guys. So be sure to go check them out. And on the next slide here, I do have our in-person events that we're bringing back. I'm so excited for them. But if you're not located in Texas, as we bring back our in-person events, we still have a lot of opportunities for you guys to network with other investors on our online platforms. One of the best ways to do this is through the virtual networking happy hours. They are on the first and third Wednesday of every month. And these are great. They're actually set up as a Zoom meeting. Everyone online can share their cameras. Everyone gets a chance to introduce themselves and chat with each other. And it's really built up a nice little solid network of IRA investors across the U.S. And we host this event on the first and third Wednesday of every month. You can also find this online on our website. Also, our last big online conference that we'll be hosting probably for the rest of this year is the Quest Summer Intensive. Um, this event will be a three-day online conference. It's uh, completely online. Tickets are $25. And each day starting this Friday, we will be focusing on the different investment types that you can actually hold in a self-directed IRA at Quest. So Sarah, if you can do us an email, put my personal email there in the chat. Um, that's haley.gant at questtrust.com. I do actually have a few free tickets that I can give away tonight. If you guys send me an email right now, Sarah will put it in the chat. Um, I'll register you for a free ticket. Can't do it for everyone. Um, but if you guys are interested in that, send me an email and I'll get you a free ticket. Also, Here's what I've been hinting at throughout these entire announcements. These are the grand opening events. Kicking it off on Tuesday, August 3rd in Houston, we are opening back up our classrooms for our first big mixer style events that we've hosted since March of 2020. So I'm so excited to be bringing these back. Um, we will be hosting grand opening events in Houston, Austin, and Dallas. They will be on the 1st second and third Tuesday of every month. These are totally free to attend. You don't have to be a Quest client, but if you guys aren't aware, Quest has really awesome big classrooms where traditionally speaking, we used to host all of our events. People can actually network in person. You can meet vendors that are there with their tables set up and these are going to be big, fun events. They're white linen themed. Um, Houston's got a big white linen party every year. So we kind of just ran with that. I'm super excited for it. And be sure to register for those. Again, totally free. You can find those online at questtrust.com. Now, our promotion that we have going on for this month is our rewards for deposits promotion. Whether you are a new client opening up an account and moving money over or 
If you're an existing client and maybe you've got another upcoming investment and you're looking at moving some more of your funds into Quest, we are giving away up to $500 in fee credits, depending on how much you look at moving into your Quest account. So starts out at $125, kind of moves up the tiers from there. And if you're a new client, be sure to use the promo code rewards21. Or if you are an existing client, just email our team sales at questtrust.com and we'll apply those credits for you at the end of this quarter. Now we also have a referral program, guys. We love referrals. Um, we get a lot of our business by word of mouth as almost everyone does in the real estate industry. So if you know of family or friends or colleagues that could benefit from having an IRA at Quest, uh, make sure to tell them about us. You will each get a $25 credit to your account when you refer a new client to Quest. And if you have questions about that, that's just send a chat to Sarah. Um, you can also visit refer.questtrust.com and we have the full details on that webpage. All right, that's it. That's all I've got. Ton of announcements tonight, but I'm so excited that we're bringing back our in-person events. So I hope that we see you guys in person here soon. And if you have questions, reach out to us. We're always really easy to get a hold of, whether you're a new client looking to get started, looking for more information about our events, or if you have some tough IRA questions that you want to run by us, um, reach out to us, give us a call, send us an email, chat us through the website, and we are always happy to help. Now, without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and bring back Mr. Robert Martinez from Rockstar Capital. Robert has been in the multifamily space, um, I believe here, yeah, here in Houston. Um, sorry, we get it mixed up sometimes, but here in Houston for several years, he's won actually several awards, the top apartment, um, I don't know if it was syndicator or operator of the year from the Texas Apartment Association. So Robert, if you're here, go ahead and share your camera. I know you've got a crew kind of working with you in your studio tonight. Um, there you are, Robert, the floor is yours. Take it <laughs> away. And if you guys have questions, I'll come back on at the end and we'll do some Q&A. Well, hey, thank you so much for having me again. I'm super excited. Like It is rainy, rainy, rainy outside, but here it is dry and it's sunny at Rockstar Capital. We're excited. In fact, I'm going to kick open a beer because it's after hours. You know, we're going to have a good time. So I'm just going to open up a little beers and relax me. I encourage you to have a beer with me. So... Again, thank you guys for having me on today. This is a really interesting and important presentation uh, that they've asked me to do. And I'm really excited to be the one to do that uh, because I don't consider myself a syndicator. Syndicator is a guy that pulls your money, somebody else's money together when they go buy a deal and then they walk away. Guys like Grant Cardone, these other guys, they're syndicators. Uh, I'm not a syndicator. I'm an owner operator. And I've been doing this for 15 years nearly. And uh, I've run over you know, 6,000 units in my time. Uh, um, and I'm going to show you the difference, between, the difference between an owner operator and a syndicator today. And I really help you make the best decision when you're out there looking for the deal to put your money in. Uh, because you're only going to get one chance. If it goes bad, you're never going to want to do real estate again. Um, but it all happens on who you choose. It all happens on the on the decisions you have, the information you have, and the decisions you make to choose from. So with Without further ado, let's get going. Finding the right deal. Uh, a little bit about Rockstar Capital. Uh, I graduated from Texas A&M uh, 1997. Spent the next 10 years of my uh, career as a commissioned salesman uh, working oil and gas, selling engineered product. I did that for, again, 10 years until I realized that the game was fixed. No matter how hard I worked, no matter how much I sold, no matter how much I wanted to be here in, in, uh, in uh, commissions, my employer wanted me to be here. And after the third time of them monkeying with my commission around, I decided to look for something else. Uh, I found real estate. I was in my in my car on the way to a sales call, uh, and I heard this crazy guy on the radio here in Houston uh, who owned a real estate club. Uh, after about a year of listening to them, I, I heard I had the courage to finally join his club. I went in for the two day seminar. When I walked out on that Saturday, I thought I was going to be the single family king. I was learning everything I ever wanted to know on how to buy and manage and own a single family investment. Um, thought that was it. Sunday came back, it was multifamily, didn't know anything about apartments, did not go to that class thinking I was gonna ever do any with apartments. But when I left, I realized that that was my chance at generational wealth. Uh, and that's something we've been able to do for my family, able to do for my investors. And now beginning, uh, we're able to do it for our, for our team members here and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, 
had a partner when I first joined that real estate club. Uh, with him, we built up a portfolio of 2,000 units. I was the operating arm. I ran those deals. I trained the staff. I did the underwriting and the performance. Uh, I made sure I got us to the finish line when it came to the refinances. Uh, but you know, as any partnership goes, it ends. Uh, in 2011, I started Rockstar Capital. Uh, over the next 10 years, I've amassed over 4,500 units that we own and manage. Again, that's a very different uh, differentiator between some some people that do deals and others. We don't just pour our money together as other syndicators. We're going to operate. We're going to self-manage. And we're, we're ver vertically integrated where we have a whole team of people that are looking at that. But very in the, in the very beginning, it was just me. I wore every single hat. I wore the underwriting hat. I wore the um, the uh, the ownership hat, the management hat, the renovation hat. It's a lot of hats to have to uh, wear, but it's how you get good. If you don't immerse yourself in something, you can never become an expert in it. I'm very fortunate uh, that over the time, I got pretty good at this. Uh, along the way, we've had 13 cash out refinance events. We've had 19 city, state, national apartment association awards. And I was crowned the first ever two-time national independent owner of the year. Uh, a couple months ago, I was crowned the 2020 Texas independent owner of the year. And that's a big one for me, right? Because what happened in 2020? That was COVID. And to be crowned the best owner operator in the state of Texas during COVID was amazing for me because it it was you know it was our it was coming up on our ten year anniversary and to navigate the waters of COVID using the lessons that I learned back in 07, 08 during the Great Recession was very very rewarding. Our, our revenue jumped ten percent, our portfolio asset value jumped ten percent, and it was a big reason why we have the success we have today. Kind of went into my story already uh, on this next page. Uh, Sam Morris, look, there is no I in team. You've got to have a full, complete team. Uh, I was very fortunate when Sam Morris, a friend of mine of 20 years uh, in 2019, asked uh, to come join Rockstar Capital. Sam is a former banker um, of over 20 years, uh, done over a billion dollars in multifamily and real estate transactions. And to have somebody like that who's covering your back, reading the legal docs, reading the financial docs, you know, having his expertise while I'm out there operating the rest of the properties is, is a godsend. So I want to thank Sam for that. Hey, uh, Robert, really quick. I'm not sure yes. if your screen is shared. I don't know if you guys want oh, to go ahead and share okay. that. Something happened. Let's push it back, Tyler. When I when I shared mine, I stole your screen. Share. Oh, so I thought That's it was why. Tyler. I was drinking a beer. I thought Tyler was, was, was taking a swig. I didn't know. I always like to tell you in the beginning and not the end, though. No, no. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Please. <laughs> no problem with the interruptions. I can go backward on the screen. Just pick any slide. Can you see now? Yeah, that's perfect. You're good to go. Do you see the mission slide? Yes, we do. Okay, cool. So this is a very important slide again. Uh, these are the three pillars of our business. This is why we're here. You got to know your why. What is your why? For me, I want to create the best real estate organization I can so I can create generational wealth. Generational wealth first for my investors. I need to make sure that they're getting rich. I need to make sure that they're cash flowing investments. I need to make sure that they want to do this again because, you know, you don't get to run over 6,000 apartment units. Um, today, our, our, our portfolio is around 4,000 units. We got $420 million in asset value. I've raised over $138 million of private capital. That only happens when you do a good job for them. I'm super excited that those investors have generational wealth today. Many of them are retired because of the of the investments they've made with us at Rockstar Capital. Others have put their kids through Ivy League schools. Um, others are just enjoying life, supplementing their income. It's like being married to a third person, having a six-figure income come in every year based off their investment choices. So generational wealth for investors and our team. I got to make sure that I create the best opportunity I can for my team to grow. You know, I sit in that chair and I think every single day, where are we going to go? How are we going to get there and how fast can we get there so that I can create opportunities for my team? Again, generational wealth is everywhere, right? I need to make sure that I allow them to experience what I've been able to experience. So I'm very fortunate that on our most recent acquisition, which will be closing next week, this is the first time teammates at Rockstar Capital have had a chance to become an owner 
sitting next to me. They're going to get a K1. They're going to know what it's like to experience the, those negative losses that we get on our K1s that help us write off our taxes and to get that cash flow. Many of them are in their 20s still. I've got a corporate team of 20 plus and the average age is in the mid to late 20s. And to give them that chance at owning real estate at an early age, it's super exciting for me um, to be able to be that mentor for them and hopefully help change their path to allow them to create generational wealth for them. And for the residents, look, I, we're only here if we do a good job with the residents. We're only here if the residents renew. You know, there's a little secret that nobody ever talks about. You make no money when people move in. You make your money when people renew. And the reason why that is, is that every single time somebody moves out and you have to lease it again, you got commissions, you got marketing costs, you got vacancy loss, you got make ready costs. And as you guys know, with inflation, everything's more expensive. But when they renew, you don't spend any money. You save right around $3,000. And $3,000 on a six cap is around $50,000 of savings, $50,000 of added value back to your property every single time that they renew. It's one of the reasons why our company is ranked tops in the nation for resident satisfaction. J. Turner Research produces our annual aura score. We've been, we've had a prop, at least one property, last year it was four properties, but at least one property rank in the top 1% nationally out of 131,000 communities for resident satisfaction, because we understand it all starts with the resident. Take care of them and they will take care of you. All right, so I talked, oh, oh missed my wine, did I put before? Ah, oh, guess, oh, what's going on here? Okay, uh, defining my why. Well, there's my why. You know, before you start out in anything, you need to know your why. My why are those two little boys, Connor and Ryan. Uh, that picture is just a little bit dated. Today, they're 15 years old. They're 13 years old. Uh, they actually started working here at Rockstar Capital as our first interns a couple of weeks ago. Super exciting for me because, you know, daddy gets to show them around what we built. But rest, you know, make no mistake that when I sign on the dotted line in every single deal and it's a recourse note for 10, 20 million dollars on my neck, it's on their neck. And I take that very seriously because I want nothing to happen to them in their future. So I'm going to guard their future. And if your money's next to ours, I'm going to guard your future. So these are some of the characteristics that you want to look for when you're looking on who to invest with. How serious are they? This is a full-time gig for me. I don't have any third-party interest. I don't own any other companies. The only company I own is Rockstar Capital and the investments that we own or manage. All right. So the most important slide in this entire presentation is right here. This is the magic formula. This is what I learned on that Sunday in that real estate class that would change my life forever. I paid $10,000 to join that real estate club. And this is the most important thing that I learned right here was the magic formula. The magic formula is very simple. It's revenue minus expenses equals NOI, right? We all learned that from some of our business classes or accounting class. Revenue, your sales, expenses, you know, the cost of goods sold or, or your operating expenses equals your NOI, net operating income. $1 of net operating income divided by the cap rate is your valuation. So in this example, $1 of income or $1 of expense of expense savings added to the NOI divided by cap rate of four equals $25. Where else can you do that? Where else can $1 equal $25? I'm an engineer by trade, right? So I'm used to like one plus one is two. Well, in real estate, one plus one is not two. If you have one plus one, you have two divided by a cap rate of four, you have actually have $50, not, not $2. Let me show you an example of what that means. Valencia, this is a new deal that we're actually in contract. It's the class A deal that we're doing. We're going to be adding a tech package. We have a little experience with this from another property that we own or manage that we just sold a month ago for a monster profit. But we're going to add smart features. We're going to add the smart thermostats. We're going to add the ability to open their door from their phone. We're going to add uh, um, uh, Alexas. We're going to have different kinds of technology in that unit to bring that unit to 2021 standards. And the resident is going to gladly pay $25. And when they pay $25, that's straight to the NOI because it's revenue, right? Revenue, it costs us nothing to operate because we're going to pay for it. $25 every single month. $25 times 246, 246 units equals $6,150 of new revenue. That revenue times 12 is $73,800 divided by the cap rate of 4% equals $1.845 million. Now, you can't do that in single family homes. You can't charge them $25 to your renter and somehow create $1.8 million in new valuation. 
but you can in multifamily. And that's the magic formula explained in a nutshell. So it's very important to understand that when you're investing, there, you know, there is no one size, one size fits all. What is it you're trying to do? Do you want to own it for a short, short term? Do you want to own it long term? What are the benefits? Who's going to be running the deal? You need to make sure that you have these questions. And so because before you invest in anything, you need to invest in yourself. Take a real estate class. I spent $10,000 back in 2007 to learn this. I have a friend of mine who joined that real estate class with me, and he chose not to spend the $10,000. In fact, he went, to the, he, uh, he went to the Saturday event with me, didn't show up on Sunday, decided he was ready to go and go buy his single family house all by himself. He made almost every single mistake that they would have taught you in that class not to do. It took him twice as long. It took him twice as much money to, to do. And when it, when it finally sold, he didn't make hardly any money. But what he did have to face is the disapproval of his wife because he was not willing to spend that money to invest in himself. He made mistakes. His wife lost confidence in him. And at the end of the day, he didn't do any more real estate deals. And that's sad because he's a really smart guy. But when he lost that momentum, it was over. And you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you, before you jump in anything, whether it's brain surgery, whether it's putting $100,000 into a multifamily deal, you understand who you're investing with. It's very important because they're going to be guarding your, they're guarding your money with their life. So here's another example of a, of a um, opportunistic strategy that we've had. There's a property called The Cove in Corpus Christi. 264 units, class A. It was an opportunistic buy and flip. People say you can't buy and flip. You can't. We just, we just did it. Uh, we bought this deal at 60% occupancy in 2019. We got it up to 97% two years later. We wound up selling it to somebody. And at the end of the day, we paid $30 million for it in June of 2019. By April of 2021, we sold it just a couple months ago. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. We got in the contract in April. We sold it a month ago for a six and a half million dollar profit. That was a 1.70 return to our investors, a 70% return to our investors in two years. That means if you gave me $100,000, I gave you back $100,000 and another $69,000. That was an, that's an example of a short-term buy and flip. Another example we have is a property we're in contract right now. Oh, sorry. This one's called Valencia. This property is in the Med Center. It's 246 units, 2015 Class A. This is a longer term whole force. It's currently 100% pre lease but there is so many good things going around this property. One, you cannot build this property again today in 2021 for the value that we're buying it today. It comes, 60% of the units come with attached garages. It's in a choice uh, area where the land's too expensive to build. And if you try to build it, you're not going to be able to get the economies of scale that we're getting today. Um, monster, monster opportunities to take advantage of the medical center growth. Anybody familiar with the life sciences expansion, uh, the, the TMC3, this property is right next to that. It's going to it's going to take on the, uh, the, the, the brunt of that. And we're going to see long term hold. This will be a deal where we're, in the next three to five years, we will refinance, pull probably 80 percent of your cash out, give it back to you, sit on it for another three to four years. And then at the end of the day, we're going to walk away with around a 3x multiple in a 7 to 10-year horizon. So there's different kinds of deals. There's short-term deals, longer-term deals. So it's very important that when you get in these deals, right, you can have any sales guy that knows how to speak talk to you. And he's going to show you what he wants you to see. But then you've got to have a little checklist that you ask yourself to qualify him. Number one, what is his background? What makes him qualified to run this deal? What is his track record? Is this his first deal or has he done 6,000 units worth of deals? Are they, are they willing to tell you about the performances? Are they willing to tell you that they've done 13 cash out refinance events or they tell you that they've never done a deal at all and you're the guinea pig? Nothing wrong with that, but the compensation and the, and the structure need to reflect that. Who's on their team? Is it a one-man gang or is it an organization behind them? What is their track record? What is their background? Being able to compare one deal to another is going to help you make a better decision. But perhaps the most important deal you need to ask yourself is, how much money are they going to put into a deal? I just saw a deal structure. It's a deal in Charleston, South Carolina, a Class A deal. They have A shares and B shares. The promote is 30%. They're not going to take a dollar until after they return 100% of your money. 
but never throughout the deal did they ever have any of their own skin in the game. You got to ask them, how much money are you going to put into the deal? On those two deals I talked to you about, on, um, on, the, on Cove, I had $300,000. On Churchill, the other deal we're going to do, I, had 200, I have $200,000 that, um, that will be invested and deployed next week. On the Class A deal, Valencia, I have $300,000 in those deals. Ask your, your, your operator, how much money are they going to put into the deal? What is your skin of the game? And then ask them, have you ever done a cash call? What a cash call is, is when things go south, when the business plan isn't clear or the business plan gets blown up and they say, hey, folks, I know I raised five million dollars from everybody, but we're hurting. I might lose the deal and I need everybody to come up with another hundred thousand dollars each. Because we're behind on our mortgage or because I didn't budge enough for property tax or because I didn't do this or do that. That's the sign of a problem. A cash call is a poison pill. That means something is wrong. And you're now in this deal and you got to make an investment. Do I throw good money after bad? It, it, it's really a paradox. It's, it's really a, a, a no win scenario and you don't want to be in that. So ask those questions. How much skin do you have in the game? What is your track record? And have you ever had to do a cash call? Because momentum is everything. you got to get this right. You've got to make sure you do this right. Because if you put money with the wrong guy, not only will you lose the money, you're not going to do another deal. And I'm going to tell you, I know no other way of generational wealth than multifamily real estate. I've done it for my family. I've done it for my investors. I'm now beginning to do, do, to do it for my team. But, you get, but I, I have a track record. I know what I'm doing now. And I have an accomplishment around me to double and triple check me. It's okay if you invest with a one-man gang. But what is their background? What are their safeguards? What are they saying that's going to make you feel comfortable? If they put all the money they have in the world in that deal... I'm feeling pretty good about putting, put, putting my money there next to them because I know they can't afford to lose that deal. Oops. Oop. All right, I'm going to stick on this slide. So organizational chart. This is our organizational chart. As I said before, there is no one-man gang. I am not a syndicator. A lot of these syndicator guys put deals together. They have a small asset team that helps them run the deal. Uh, let's say an analyst, uh, let's say an accounting person, and that's it. I've got a full structure here deal. I've got operations on the left side, and I've got my asset side on the, on the right side. Uh, my operations team is led by Bill Nye, an industry legend of over 30 years in the field. He's an independent owner operator guy, just like me. He teaches nationally the certified apartment manager class. Apartment associations around the country employ him to come in and teach their property managers how to become better property managers. Uh, next to him is our VP of operations, Michelle Lowe. It's, her resume is a who's who of where she's worked. Trauma Crow, Gray Star, Alliance, the, the who's who of the industry. But then again, you also need to have, and then and you have Caleb, who's our digital marketing guru. He's our ninja, being able to, to generate leads, uh, search engine optimization, understanding social media. But then you also got to have your other side. You got to have your training team, right? Because it doesn't matter if you employ something new, someone needs to be there to train the teams how to lease. Someone needs to be there how to train the teams and how to use the operating systems and how to make sure we're all, because quality controls everything. So we have Nola Gordon, who again, used to work at a company called Graystar. Uh, and then we have um, Stephanie. Stephanie came from us from Camden. She's our HR because when you're running a 120 person, uh, per, uh, 20, 120 person portfolio, there's a lot of things that come up and you got to make sure that all concerns are heard. Everybody is on the same page and we're all moving in the right direction. And of course, on the right side, you got Sam's team. You know, Sam's our chief investment officer and our financial officer. He's got his accounting lead with Grace. He's got his project manager that oversees our rehabs and Nick Martinez. And he's got his right hand, Dub Morris, who is a both a CPA and an attorney at the same time. So we were a full, full-fledged property management company. I can't advance the slide. Can you help me? I'm sorry, hey, just a quick second. We're having a technical issue. Oh, go back one. Right there. Okay, so what does your track record say? At Rockstar Capital, we've been ranked from HPJ's Fast 100 three years in a row. This year, when we get nominated, we'll be number four. Uh, we rank number two in the state of Texas for our reputation management. This is scores that our, in the, that our residents score us against, how happy they are, their satisfaction scores. 
We have 19 city state national apartment association awards five years straight of being ranked in Jay Turner's elite top 1% for customer satisfaction out of a, over a hundred thousand communities. And again, I'm a two time national independent owner of the year. So when, you know, I don't expect everybody to have these kind of results, but if you're investing with somebody, what are their results? What is their feather in their cap? What are they known for? What is their achievement? Why do you feel comfortable giving them $100,000 and thinking that they're going to be able to give it back to you? It's very, very important that you understand what their track record is. That's the next slide. Okay. Oh, right there. And then when you do, when you find out they won these awards. Why do they win these awards? Here's our track record. On the left side, you'll see 13 cash out refinance events of some of our communities and the and the dates. Some of them were, were refinanced out twice and three times. On the right side is our dispositions. That means we actually show the ability to buy a deal, own it for a period of time, and sell it. Every single one of these deals sold for monster, monster returns. Um and it's very important that you that whoever you're investing with has shown that, right? Because anybody can buy a deal. Anybody can sign on the dotted line. It's what happens when the ink dries that matters. Who's going to run it? And what is, their, what is their likelihood for success? And have they ever bought a deal and sold a deal? That's very important. You know, we had never sold a deal up until about two years ago. And you'll see, or three years ago, and you'll see now that we're starting to sell our older assets, deals that we bought in 2010, 2011, 2012, to take out that equity, that built-in equity, and now redeploy it on other deals. So it's very exciting. In the last, within the last six months, we've actually done $26.5 million of, of dis dispositions. That means $26.5 million back into your pocket. Literally, this year we've written a check for $26.5 million and gave that back to our investors. That included their cash flow and that included their, their original investment. And again, we have one more deal under contract. All right. And that's that's the end of the presentation. Time for some Q&A. I hope we have some anyway. Yes, we do. Um, All right. Pull them up here really quick. And guys, if you have questions, be sure to send them in the Q&A box to Robert. Um, this is a really good question from one of our attendees. What document should we request to determine if the operator is putting their own money into the deal? It's a great question. That is a great question. I've never had anybody ask me to prove it um, because I have an accounting group and I've got like 120 people watching my every move. So if I said something, it wouldn't happen. Um, I, I think you can request the bank statement showing showing their, their wire. You know, you, you can request them the, the wire transaction that they put into it. Um, then on the balance sheet, it's going to show, you know, they're going to have to have a CPA or somebody that's going to put the balance sheet together. And if they say they put $200,000, it needs to show their name with $200,000 on there. If not, it's fraud. And I don't think anybody's going to commit fraud. So I think you can request the wire transaction information and then you can maybe request the balance sheet uh, and then request maybe even a bank statement showing their, that their money hit the bank. Mm -hmm. And if they're hesitant to show you this information, could definitely be a red flag. Those are right? all red flags. Those are, it's <laughs> like dating, right? Here, you got to make sure you 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 ask the right questions, and if they don't answer you the right way, you got you got to pull out. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And Robert, this is actually something I learned earlier this week from another presentation I watched. You know, do you think there's a difference if, say, like an owner operator is collecting fees from like raising the capital and just using that to invest just versus using their own capital that they might have on the side. Do you think there's a difference there? Do you think that's something to kind of watch out for? Well, I do because I think they need to have their own cash. Yeah. It's great to have fees. And I'm not going to lie to you and say, we don't charge it. We do. But I, I know here at Rockstar Capital, I have a room full of people listening to me right now. I literally don't get any of those fees. That's the pay for salaries because I want to have the biggest and the baddest machine. You know, I want to make sure that I have that I can afford Bill Nye, who's, you know, highly sought after in this industry, that I can afford a Michelle Lowe. You know, it's interesting that that, you know, three years ago, I was probably the only six figure earner in the company. And now there's a whole lot of people who have those backgrounds. I was the only college degree. And now I've got 16 college degrees and masters, you know, within the company. Right. But with that come compensation for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So oh, yeah. um, I think they need to show you that they have equity in the game and there's fees and all. there's always going to be fees. But. If they don't have the money to put into it first before the fees, I think that's a problem. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it, again, I mean, the fact that you're asking that question, your warning bell is going off, you know, and you shouldn't have a warning bell the first day you're getting into a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Great points there. And, you know, speaking of having good, solid people that work for you, I think this is something that could be helpful to everyone. What do you look for when you're hiring people to work for you? You know, you don't just become the top operator of the year out of nowhere. There's definitely no. a team behind that. What do you look for as you're like hiring people to work for your company? When I look, what I look for, number one is heart, because I can teach you some things, especially with, with uh, people that I'm hiring. Most, most of my staff here in the corporate side are in their twenties. You know, I need to feel good about them. I need to know that if I get in a foxhole with them, that they're not going to run, that they're going to sit there with me and we're going to, whatever happens, we're going to go through together. And they don't have to have the answer, just have a, whatever it takes attitude that I'm going to figure out the answer, you know, cause when I was a one man gang, you know, I didn't have the answers. I, I sat there and I just tried to figure it out. And I just need to know that I have around people around me that are going to stay late, are going to help me figure it out. They're not going to leave early. You know, in this room right now, I've got a couple of people that I think the world of, you know, and they're here. It's, it's 7.30. They don't have to be here. They're, they're here because they should they have heart, you know, and I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm, definitely. And these webinars are fun, right? <laughs> they are. They are. They are fun. <laughs> awesome. Um, this is a good question here. Um, Rick wants to know, have you had any capital calls? And if yes, how many and how much? I love that question. That was one of my slides, right? Have mm-hmm. you had a cash call? I'm very fortunate. The answer at Rockstar Capital is zero. We make sure that we raise what we need to raise. We have a business plan. We have a budget. We have a team of people that are like, you know, checks and balances on each other. And we have not had to have any kind of cash calls. I mean, you know, when you do a cash call, things have gone wrong. Uh, there was a misallocation. There was a miss, uh, miss thought somewhere. You know, and I get it. Look, taxes and insurance are crazy right now. And there's some high reserves that are being requested. But, you know, a good operator is going to anticipate that. That means you don't over distribute either. You know, it's better to not distribute for the quarter and say, folks, I'm not going to distribute for the quarter because I've got to hold some money back for taxes and insurance. But when you're actually asking for cash, that means that option has already been exhausted. And it's a really complicated matter. Anybody who does this long enough knows you don't want to ask for money. It, it, it's a sign of, of a failure somewhere in the system. There's a systematic problem somewhere. And, and uh, now they're asking to throw maybe good money after bad. Mm-hmm. So the answer is zero. <laughs> Great, great question and great answer there. Um, Let me see here. Oh, gosh, I had a really good question here. Yes. Another good one from Rick. Rick wants to know, when you acquire a new property, do you immediately implement upgrade plans, washer dryer ads, et cetera, to drive new revenue immediately? Okay, great question. And that that is something that I've, I've gone around full circle on. In my early days, I wanted to jump in there right away and I wanted to start the rehab and I wanted to start doing this and doing that. That is not the time to do it. It is a shocking time for the residents to realize that there's new ownership, Uh, that the person that was in that office that they've gotten to know for the last five years is no longer there. Maybe you didn't retain the manager. She's not there anymore, you know, because what they get, they get a letter on their door that says the property has been sold. Have you ever lived in an apartment complex and you got that letter? Haley, I did. I remember I lived in, in the late 90s. I, I was my very first apartment. I was a letter there, letter there that said the property has been sold. But keep writing your checks out to Lantern Village Apartments or whoever it was at the time. And and uh, and I did. I was like, what does all this mean? You know, and really, I don't remember any renovations going on or I was just too young or too busy in my life. But, you know, for people that have families and they're there for many years, the last thing they want is havoc. This is their home. And you got to be very careful how you introduce anything because there's a balance, right? Um, That's number one. Number two, you've got to understand what you just bought. No matter your best due diligence, you're going to find dead bodies. You are. And it's your job to find out where they're buried. And the last thing you want to do is to have too many balls in the air, but with a renovation plan and trying to do this and that, when you're still trying to understand what did you just buy? So when we buy a property, we're going to walk it all over again and make sure that the rent roll matches the rent roll we had before. And believe me, you know, uh, people will hold over units, meaning that there's phantom occupancy that they say are there. Uh, they were there the day we did our due diligence and the day we did our walk. And now magically, they're not there. If I'm starting at 90, 90% with my renovation, but in reality, I'm at 84% and I wasn't paying attention, I'm going to be a little nervous. I may be wanting to put more emphasis on my leasing efforts than my renovation efforts. So it's very important to just give your team a chance to assimilate the property. 
you know, you want to do a resident party to talk about the new ownership. You want to do a little barbecue, a hot dog thing to talk about the renovation plans. You want to send them out a letter that says, here's what we're going to do. We, we, we heard your feedback. These are the things that we want to do. Whether you're going to do them or not, you can make it sound like it was their idea, right? But you want to get their buy-in. Use the first 30 days to just kind of get all your accounts set up with, with all the different vendors and kind of walk your property and really understand how this property ticks. How many calls am I getting at night? Like, you know, I know I want to do this, but on my renovation plan, but man, I didn't realize that there's so many leaky this or leaky that or broken this. But after 30 days, I now know that. So I may need to shift my renovation dollars around. So it's very good to just for the first 30 days to do nothing. Just learn the system. And the other side too, is when you do a property management software, it's normally not live day one. It takes some time to do the conversion. It's anywhere from a week to two weeks. So you're actually doing stuff on, in, in, on, on ledgers, the old fashioned way from like 40 years ago. So you don't wanna be introducing a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. That's great information there, especially you now having the barbecues, getting to know the residents, not changing things too quickly because I know as someone who's lived in apartments with bad management, it, it can go downhill very quickly there. So that's some great insight. Um, I really like this question. What did your first multifamily deal look like? Size of asset, capital raise, your own money, et cetera. I'm mentally transitioning into the multifamily mindset and curious on how you started out. It's a great question. It's a great question. So my, my very, uh, let's see, my first deal at Rockstar Capital was in 2010. It was a 118 unit deal. I bought it during the recession. They were at 77% occupied. Um, I raised, man, I raised 1.5 million. It was a $2.9 million purchase. I raised 1.5 million. I put 150,000 of my own money in that deal. So I was 10% ownership of that deal. Uh, my override was 10% at that time. And I was very scared because I've never taken over a property where the economy is, is against me. You know, uh, we learned very quickly that the rents were, were, were overpriced. So we, we took, we went from 77% to 90% because we lowered rents by $100 day one. And that's all we needed to do that first, that first month. Uh, by month two, we went from 90 to 95, but we slowly started to test the market, picking up 20 bucks, picking up 10 bucks, picking up 30 bucks. And then we hit resistance, then we came back down. So within 90 days, we were at 99% occupied. Uh, on a 118 unit deal. We did our renovation. We, we, uh, we uh, reskinned the deal, meaning that we took all the old cedar planking off. We put brand new Hardy on it. We painted, uh, we replaced some of the air conditions. Today, I replace all the air conditions. I wanna buy a deal where day one, I know that the air conditions are mine and they're in a warranty. I know the lessons today that I didn't know then is that you make all your money when people renew. Well, the number one, the number one reason why people move out is maintenance. The number one maintenance headache is air conditions. And you know, you if it's a hundred degrees in Houston, it's probably 82 degrees in your apartment. And I don't know about you, but I can't sleep at 82 degrees. If I'm one of my residents and I'm a just say a day laborer, or I work at a restaurant or what at workforce housing, and I'm stressed out and I've had a bad day and I just want to come home, I want to come home to a, a normal cold apartment. I don't want to come home to heat when I've been outside all day long. So part of a renovation that I didn't know then is that we focus on basic services. I change out the boiler. I wanna make sure there's hot water consistent on demand. There's also a benefit to that because now I get a brand new boiler, it's under warranty, something breaks, I call somebody. More importantly though, it's now energy efficient. And every dollar of NOI now makes me money. That boiler pays for itself the moment I put it in. These are lessons I didn't know back then. These are lessons that I learned later on. The air condition, that pays for itself because if you save a move out, you just made $50,000. And when you're doing a renovation, people automatically assume you're going to raise the rents. And they say, oh, you always do stuff for somebody else on the new move-ins. You know, their units are beautiful. Look at my apartment. Yeah, but you also got a brand new air condition, didn't you? They're like, well, yeah. Okay, so you can absorb the $20 rent bump that I'm giving you. And they have nowhere to go with that because they did get a piece of the renovation. They see you spending money everywhere and they don't get any of that money in their unit. And they feel like, well, I, don't, I shouldn't have to pay the new rents. But you did, you got a brand new air condition. And we put a brand new boiler in, you have hot water now. You know, we put all these new amenities in there. We have a new dog park, we have a new this, a new barbecue area, a new whatever. You're able to explain that and have some ammo behind it. So those are some of the differences and the lessons that I learned. It's just the name of the game is renewal. Not, you make your money when people renew, not when they move in. 
Gosh, that's so true. Except for one apartment I had in Dallas, I was able to negotiate. They lowered my rent when I renewed and they gave me a thousand dollar concession, but that's not normal. So that, that was a it's really not, good. You know why they did that? Do you know why they did that? Yes, I do actually, but you probably um, have a much more technical, better answer. No, but tell, 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 tell me why they did it. Why do you think they I, did it? I actually referred some really good friends of mine that moved oh. into the complex and their rent was like $200 lower than mine. And so I went in and I was nice. I used my kind of professional negotiating skills. And But what, what is your technical answer there of why they did that? Well, it's, it's exactly what I said before. <clears throat> um, leasing activity at that time. You know, sometimes I want you to move out. If I can get $200 more, right? Well, let's, let's do the math on that. $200 times 12, oops, times 12 is 2,400 divided by a four cap. I'm going to assume you live in a nice class A property. I make $60,000 more in valuation if you move out. So sometimes I do want you to move out. The fact that they gave you money, a thousand dollar concession or gift card or what it was, and they lowered your rent 200 means that it was more important to keep you there then they thought they could replace you. It means that there wasn't very much demand for your apartment. So we rather keep you the devil that we know and give you a small little discount so I can keep that head in the bed because you probably paid your rent every single month on time and you were, you were no problem. It made sense. It's a balancing act. You're running a business mm -hmm. and you've got to just pay attention to everything. If, if leasing demand is high, I'll let you go. But if leasing demand is hard, you're like, hmm. She's a good, ra you'll rationalize your way to keep you there. And you just re referred somebody. So you actually pay for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gosh, that probably the only time in my life that will ever happen, but it was so awesome. But that's um, great negotiation. I like that. <laughs> right. Set so it's a really yourself. nice email to management. Oh yeah. Um, but anyways, Robert, we've got time for a few more questions here. Yeah, we please. Have we have a ton of questions coming in, guys. I will let you know if your question is really detailed with percentages and numbers, please reach out to Robert directly. Maybe you guys can have more of a follow-up conversation about that. But we do have a few good general questions here. This one's good. Speed dating. Let's go. Speed dating. I'm ready. Yeah, right? Um, what markets are you involved in? Do you have any concerns about a market crash for multifamily coming up in any particular markets? All right. So very quickly, we are in Houston. Greater Houston. We're in Houston. We're in the east side of Houston. We're in Alvin, Brazoria County. We do very well. We escaped the tax man, went down to South Texas to have lower taxes, lower insurance. It's been great. One of the deals that we sold, we sold at 60% profit in just two years. Um, the other deal, a market crash. No, there will not, not be a market crash. Here's why. What survived COVID? Zoom, Amazon, uh, uh, Amazon and Netflix. You know what you got to have for all three of those to work? You got to have four walls and a roof. Uh, the government, today's government, with the policies we have in today's government, will not let anybody go homeless. 2008, they'll let you go. There was no rent, uh, rent concessions. There was no rent forgiveness. There was no uh, uh, rent aid. None of that existed. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat during the Great Recession. In today's world, with, with today's politics and how soft we've gotten, they're going to protect everybody. Uh, we what, what we didn't collect during COVID, we're getting now uh, using the Texas Rent Relief Plan. Um, but it is changing our focus because I had to knock on a lot of doors to get that rent in, right, for my workforce housing. You know how many doors I had to knock on during my Class A properties? Zero. They paid their rent, which is why we're starting to transition over to Class A. We want to make sure we're in the easiest position, the easiest way for us to be profitable in the future. And th you know, the government's printing out money. Look, 12 months ago, I'm sorry, 18 months ago, $1 out of every $5 in your pocket didn't exist. Trump made it happen. Trump and the Fed, right? They, they created 20% new money supply. Well, Biden now has created another 22%. If you don't take your wealth and take it out of dollars and put it into income producing assets, you're going to be hurting. You've got to get your money out of, of, of the USD and put it into something that's going to generate your profit. That's awesome. And I love that you said that. That actually just sparked an idea for, I want to bring you back and teach a class about maybe transitioning from class B, C apartments to class A, why you're yeah. doing it, how the numbers work. We're, I, met, I messaged it to Sarah. We're going to get that on the calendar. Um, Let's see what you got. What else? What else? Uh, this is a good one. Do you have any refinance plans for 2021 while interest rates are so low? I mean, absolutely. I, my deals in Brazoria, I already had them on on uh, on um, floating rates. People thought it was crazy when we bought these deals two years ago, and the rates did nothing but fall. 
you know, and many of you, if y'all are not refinancing your house, I'm buying a new house. I'm going to get a new house and I'm going to get, I'm going to get a jumbo loan and it's going to be in the range of like two, five to two, seven, five. This is blows me away. So yeah, we have plans to refinance some of our deals and get and take advantage of that even lower. But I also want to buy new deals, right? Because I can get the same rates. Why wouldn't I take the cheap dollars, you know, and put into the bank? Let me tell you who the very, very best investor in the world is, the bank. Because the bank, all they want is, is what you agree to. I want that mortgage payment every single month and it would not move on you. You can charge whatever you want to charge for rents. I just want to make sure that I get that X amount every single month. That's the best business partner. And they let you keep all the upside, all the tax benefits. I want as much of that as I can. I probably owe $280 million in loans. I want to own a billion dollars one day if I can, because that's how you, in, in a capitalistic society, you must be in debt to get ahead. Mm -hmm. Great, great information there. Um, I have one more question from our attendees. And this yep. one actually kind of uh, goes back to knocking on those doors to collect those rent payments. In a situation like COVID, would this not necessitate a cash call if tenants did not pay as de as agreed? I realize rent collection was better than expected, um, but do you have any insight here? Into what, what was the question? Sorry, uh, the question was, in a situation like COVID, would this not necessitate a cash call if yeah. tenants did not pay their rent as agreed? So how many well, make a cash I'm very call fortunate that I live in the state of Texas. And the state of Texas, we have very friendly landlord laws. And one of those laws is a landlord lien. It's a strategy that I employed during 07, 08, 09, 2010, when I first got, I was born in my real estate career was born during the Great Recession. And I dealt with classy housing. And the way you got their attention was you went into their apartment and you lean stuff. I can tell you right now, when people were not paying your rent during COVID, it wasn't because they didn't have any money. We all know they had money. The government gave them a bunch of money. And I know they had money because I saw brand new cars in the parking lot. I saw brand new Samsung boxes by the dumpster. We go into their unit and you see them. So what do you think we did? Oh, nobody's home. They got a brand new Samsung. Let's take it. And you're thinking, my God, this guy sounds like he's ruthless. No, I have $130 million of investor capital I need to protect. And so if you're not going to pay, that's cool. Just know this. You're not going to live here. The next place you live will not be as nice as this because I'm going to report you as having broken your lease. And I'm going to take your brand new Samsung. You know how many people came and paid us off to get their TV back? Four or $5,000 balances just to get their TV back. Their TV is worth a thousand bucks, but they had the money. Mm -hmm. They had the money. They just didn't want to pay. So sometimes somebody needs to stand up, take the pacifier out and say, hey, we live in the real world. We're going to start adulting again. You have a contract. I provide you quality housing with basic services, water and, and electricity and an air conditioner that work and they're brand new a year ago. You're going to pay your rent. If you don't pay, I'm going to go take your Xbox. I'm going to go take your Samsung or your PS3. I'm going to take it and I'm going to get your attention and it's yours. You can have it, but I want my $4,000. Now, I know, again, that sounds rude, but this is what you have to do. You, you have no idea when I introduced that concept to, to my managers here in our office, they were so excited because they felt like they had their hands tied behind their back. I don't care if you have a science certificate from, from, uh, from whatever it was called. You need to prove to me you're looking for a job. You need to prove to me that you're not taking advantage of the system. You know how many of them just walked away? They walked away. They did because they had the money, but they want to take care of another sucker. Well, that's not going to happen to Rockstar. <laughs> that's not going to happen here. So that's how we took care of COVID. Well, we didn't get a rent relief. We, we got it from the resident one way or another. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And hey, this is coming from the uh, top apartment operator of the year, guys. So it definitely- Two-time national work, apartment right? owner, Texas <laughs> apartment owner of the year. That's how we, that's how we beat COVID. I we love didn't it. let COVID beat us. The government was not going to put us out of business. I made that decision. I'm not going to be like New York and these restaurants. You know, no, nobody's going to put us out of business. We're going to take care of ourselves and we're going to do whatever we have to. Right. You know, as you don't know what you're capable of, if your survival is at risk mm -hmm. and our survival is at risk and nobody knew it's like, you know what, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to, I'm going to, if I have to make the news, I'll make the news. You know what? I didn't get one single news reporter. I didn't get one single TV station because I had a law in my hand. It's on the back of the TAA lease contract that says landlord liens are available. You either pay your rent or we have the right to walk into your apartment. Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. I love it. Well, I think that's a great note to end on for tonight. Robert, a couple last things from you. If you had one last piece of advice for our audience out there watching tonight, what is it? And if they want to learn more about you guys, how do they reach out to you? Absolutely. Listen, the best time to invest in real estate was yesterday. All that money that we made during the Great Recession. Tons of, we just sold deals at 700% return, 900% return because we held, we bought it at the right time. But the next best time is now because money is being printed like there's no tomorrow. We don't, you're seeing it in inflation. Nobody can buy a car right now under sticker. Nobody can, you, you can't go places and not pay, pay more at Home Depot. Everything costs more. You need to get, you need to realize that and realize that that dollar in your pocket is not worth a dollar anymore. It's worth less. It's worth about 60 cents. So you need to take advantage of the low interest rates that are being pushed down and put your money into something that's going to return cash to you and help create generational wealth. Ooh, sorry, muted was typing. Um, Perfect. I think that's a great note to end on. And Robert, I put your email here in the chat, but awesome. ironically enough, my coworker, Derek, is actually at y'all's office tonight talking he to is. some of your potential investors. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 have a new, we have a new investor orientation next door in our training room. So it's kind of weird how that's happening. But yeah, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram. I've got a lot of free content there where I just talk about it like this every single day. I've got Tyler here. He's filming this whole thing. We're going to do clips on this. So, I mean, I, I love of talking. I just, whatever you want, just send me a question. I do my best to help educate you. And if you think we are, we're potential partners, Hey, we're happy to work with you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Robert. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You guys love to offer education. We love to offer education. So it's a great kind of partnership here. Um, to all of our attendees out there, I hope you guys have a fantastic night. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you have questions, reach out to Robert. His email is there in the chat or reach out to an IRA specialist. If you have questions about getting started with an IRA, looking to invest passively into a multifamily deal, we can help you get started here at Quest. Robert, thanks for your time tonight. Cheers. I'm in a coffee mug, but that's all right. And I hope you all have a great night out there. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, good.